record. We are recording. And we are live. Um, welcome everybody to today's um, virtual lunch and learn. Friday, September 10th, 2021. We're so excited to have you all here. Um, today we are going to be uh, learning about using social media as a librarian to market yourself and your services. And we have two esteemed presenters with us, uh, Mr. Alex Hernandez and Mr. Montgomery Lopez. Um, yes, I'm channeling my inner, uh, I don't know, WWF wrestler <laughs> people. <laughs> um, so today we have Alex Hernandez, who is the director of learning resources for the MDC Hialeah campus and the most recent past DCLA president, uh, currently still serving on our board and helping to uh, give us the direction and <laughs> guidance and, and all that fun stuff that grownups do, because, you know, it's dangerous to leave me unattended. It's, um, it's, it's scary then, that I'm the grown up in the room. Yes. And um, then we also have Montgomery Lopez, who's been with MDPLS since 2006 and a librarian for youth and uh, for young adult services since 2008. For the past 15 years, he's hosted um, two personal podcasts, the Monster Sci-Fi Show and Page 49. Um, MDPLS folks will know what the page 49 reference is. Uh, twice Montgomery was a text-based presenter at Zeppelin in 2013 and 2014 for podcasting and creating comics. And uh, in 2016, he worked with the U Media Miami at South Dade Regional uh, in creating podcast workshops for teens. Lastly, in 2019, Montgomery led three podcast learning circles, teaching staff how to create, host, and edit podcasts. So with that, um, hopefully everybody's brought some delicious lunch to lunch at our learn. And Alex, we need you to start off the learning. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen and hopefully this will work. So can you guys see my LinkedIn page? Yes, we can. Okay. So my presentation is marketing yourself and your services using social media. I, I went with LinkedIn, one, because it's a relatively new platform that I've been playing with um, over the past year. And two, and this is the important part, it's where our decision makers are, right? So you, you kind of have to market yourself on different platforms based on the audience. So I think as librarians, we're really good at marketing ourselves on Facebook and Instagram and probably TikTok at this point to market to our patrons. Um, but we don't really market to, you know, the, you know, the county, you know, mayor and the, the chamber of commerce and, you know, those people. And, and those are the people that are making um, decisions for our institutions, for our departments. Um, and that's something that I learned this year. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get more into that, but first to, to kind of dissect what the LinkedIn page looks like. Um, and what you should do first, right? So choose if you choose to embark on this LinkedIn um, adventure, you, you should definitely have a picture, right? Um, I know that's, that's obvious, but librarians are notorious for not wanting their uh, faces out there. We tend to have a lot of just blank um, icons. We tend to have you know, cartoon emojis or cartoon avatars. And I, I tend, like my instinct is to do that too. Um, I want to just, you know, hide behind a cartoon, but you know, if, if you're going to start marketing yourself and your services to, you know, the decision makers, again, for lack of a better term, you know, at, at your County, in your city, in your institution, um, you should have a, a professional headshot um, and it should be updated regularly. Right. So, not not the one that you took 
you know, in 1989, um, but the one that you took, you know, hopefully within the last year or two. Um, every time I get a new gray hair in my beard, I update the picture. Um, and then you should also have a banner, right? Um, Caitlin Richardson made this banner for me. I can't take credit for it, but uh, a, a banner with like a, a, a quote or, you know, I'm super nerdy. So Carl, Sag Carl Sagan's on there. Um, they kind of encapsulates, you know, who you are, what you believe in it is, is important too. Um, other than that, the profile kind of looks right. Like the way most profiles look, but you should, it also with LinkedIn, it also kind of looks like a resume, right? So you should include your experience, right? I, I was a director of learning resources at Hialeah. I was the associate director. I was a librarian to youth services supervisor at the Hialeah public libraries, you know, like, you know, put your, your experience on there um, because you're also marketing yourself, right? You're not just marketing your, your, your library. And then people do like lurk in, in your profile. So I've had people, you know, at, from other institutions kind of see like, well, who is this guy? Right. You know, and, and, and it, it's good for them to see that I'm not just making this stuff up. You know, I, I came from the public library. I work in a academic library now. Um, and then, you know, include your education. And I want to spend a little time talking about skills and endorsements because this is super important. And, and a lot of people don't have this on their LinkedIn page. Um, so skills um, does two things. One, you, you're kind of letting people know what you're good at, right? Like what your skills are. Um, that's good if you're looking for a job. That's also good when people are sizing you up, right? When they're trying to like, again, lurk on your page to see like who you are, you know, what you're about. It's good to have um, skills on there, but it's also good because it's part of like networking, right? Like you can endorse other people's skills. And I, and I encourage you to endorse people's skills. If you work, you know, with somebody on a team and, and they do a great job, go on their page if they have one and, you know, give them a, 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 an endorsement for public speaking or something. So these, these are my skills. Right. I have several skills. Some people don't think that, you know, I'm, I'm worth endorsing for some, you know, some people think I'm worth endorsing for others. Um, and, and you can, you can add skills in two ways. You can take the, the skills quiz, right. And it'll tell you what you're good at. Um, it'll, it'll assess you, right. And say like, well, we think like the, the, the LinkedIn algorithm thinks you're good at these things and it'll populate skills. Or you can just go in there and add skills yourself. Um, you can add up to 10 skills and, and keep them broad, right? You know, if, you know, leadership, manage funds, public speaking, they'll give you options, um, data analysis, tutoring, um, professional mentoring. You can put things on there. It's even if you don't have 10, put something on there because it'll give people something to, to um, endorse for you. And then, not interest, uh, license and certification. So every time you take a LinkedIn um, course, the, it, it adds it here on your license and, and, and certifications, and it adds it. You see data science foundations? It adds it as a skill as well. So um, that's another way to get skills and another way to add a certification. So I'm going to endorse somebody. Let's see, Ryan. I'm going to pick on Ryan today. Um, so when you go onto Ryan's profile or anybody's profile, it, and you scroll down, hopefully he has skills. He does have skills. So you can endorse them by clicking on the little plus sign. Um, let's see what he's got. So recently, um, uh, Ryan has put on huge events, right? At, at the Hailey campus, they're, they're super complex. They involve a lot of stakeholders and a lot of players and a lot of teams. So I can honestly say, and he's done an amazing job. I can honestly say that Ryan is great at team leader leadership, right? So I'm going to endorse him. You know, how good is Ryan? Pretty good, right? So I'm going to say he's highly skilled. And what is our relationship? I don't, you know, manage Ryan, but I worked together with him directly on one of these projects. So, you know, that's where my endorsement is coming from. Um, submit. 
And now Ryan has an endorsement for team um, leadership. Hopefully, right, Ryan feels the need <laughs> to, to, you know, pay it forward and he'll endorse somebody else's um, skills that he's worked for. And then that's how that networking begins. Um, another thing you can do, well, I I'll get to that later. Um, let, let, me, let me, so that's your profile, right? In a nutshell. The, old, the other part of, of LinkedIn is, and, and this is obvious, is building a network, right? So spend some time looking at the people that the algorithm recommends, um, you know, and, and, and connecting with them, right? So Marva Adams, you know, I know her by a different last name. She works here at the Highlight Campus. She's a professor. I want her to know um, all of the, the services that we provide for her as a faculty member and, and her, her students. So I'm gonna connect with her. Um, you know, she has to approve it. So that's the thing. This is another example, no picture. <laughs> and, and the reason the picture is important is there's a lot of, like all social media, there's a lot of um, spam and bots on here. If my rule of thumb is if somebody asks to connect with me and they don't have a picture, I tend to not connect with them because they're, they're either a bot or a vendor or, or somebody trying to sell me something or, so I don't. Um, and I think a lot of people have that rule of thumb. So it's good to have uh, a picture. But um, again, the whole point of, of LinkedIn is to network with, with people. So go, go on there. The first thing I did was network with other people from um, the Hylia campus and from MDC. Then I branched out and I started connecting with people from you know, the public library. I started connecting people with, you know, at FIU, UM, Broward College, you know, within the sphere, right, of, of my field. And then, and then once you start connecting with those people, then the algorithm starts recommending people. And sometimes they work, like, you know, Marva Adams. Sometimes they don't. Like, I don't know who most of these people are. So I, I don't um, do it. But over time, as you post, as people like your posts and share your posts, other people will see you. And then that also builds um, your network. So that, that, that kind of leads me to posting, right? What does posting look like? I'm gonna go to my activity. I'm gonna go to my posts. So there's a variety of posts and you should mix it up, right? Don't just always post a picture. Don't just always, you know, like reshare articles, try to mix it up, but there's a variety of, of, of posts that are very popular on LinkedIn. Um, I recently edited uh, an anthology of science fiction um, by Latinx authors. So I posted this there, you know, this is not work related. This is just me, you know, shamelessly self-promoting. Um, but this is one thing that, that, that I shared. I got, you know, um, 10 reactions. I also post events, right? Like, so the library um, participates in a lot of events that the, that the campus puts on for the community, for, for our faculty and students. Um, so I always try to post an event. Um, here's me in April and, and Finn. This one got 43 reactions, right? And three comments. When I say like your, your audience is also the, the stakeholders, right? At, at your institution, at your county, at your city. So of these 43 reactions, some of these were deans, right? Provosts at the college. Um, I'm letting them know that me and my department are out there, right? We're connecting with students. We're connecting with the community. Um, this is not, the audience of this post is not students, right? Students are not gonna see this. Very few students are on LinkedIn. Um, the audience of this, of this post are the decision makers at my institution for them to know, right? Because if it doesn't happen on LinkedIn, it, it didn't happen. Um, that we're out there, that we're relevant, that we're valuable to the institution. And for every one of these people that, that liked, somebody else, right? Another provost, another vice provost saw it and, and liked it and shared it. Um, I also promote our services, right? So there's a video of Caitlin talking about uh, tutor, our, our tutoring services. And you see, like, I didn't address it 
like, hey, students, come see our tutors. I addressed it as professors, right? This is the audience of this is my, it's my colleagues, right? Our colleagues. Um, and it's a video. It links to um, YouTube. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But this is an example of, you, you know, you're mixing it up, right? I'm not just posting pictures. I'm also posting videos. You know, we're getting creative also with the pictures. Like I said earlier, I'm a huge nerd. So this is what happens when you, a nerd is your supervisor. He puts masks and costumes on you. Um, but again, like this one, I did address it for students, but it's not really for students. It's also, again, for, for our leadership to see that we're getting creative. We're trying to meet the students where they're at. If this is, you know, the Disney plus type things that they're in, into, you know, we're going to do that to, to hook them. Right. Um, we also, another thing that I do, and, and I, and I do think it's a good change of pace is we give a lot of, I give a lot of kudos, right. Whether that be, you know, you know, I'm grateful to work for this, for this department. This is a great department. It's a general positive uh, message about where we work, or um, I'm highlighting a particular staff member who did something great, right? Like she just finished library school. Um, it, it's, if, if I'm trying to show, right, leadership and, and students and faculty and other professors and our colleagues that, you know, we're relevant, we're valuable, we're, we're good for the institution. I also want to show them that, you know, we're people, right? Like we're, I want to show them an, an authentic image of us, right? So we do have educational aspirations. We do want to grow in the institution. We are getting our degrees. We're proud of our accomplishments and they should be proud as well. Um, and something like this got 66 reactions, right? Um, another event, you know, we're out there, you know, helping the community. Um, this is like a huge project that, that we did. And I want to, I wanted to highlight that we accomplished it. So those are the kinds of things that we, um, that we post. So when I said kudos, you can do something like this, right? Highlight a staff member that's done something great. Um, it's also good, right? I can't give Naris a raise. I wish I could. Um, so the, the, the only way that I can pay her for all of her excellent work is to give her recognition, right? Like is to put her out there and and, and tell everybody in the world that I'm, I'm proud of her, like she's doing an amazing um, job. Another way to do it is, I'm gonna pick on Ryan again, just cause he's here, is you can give somebody um, kudos officially on the platform, right? So if you go to somebody's um, profile and you click on more, one of the things you can do is give kudos. Um, so I can click on it, I can pick, you know, whatever background I want. I like this one. Um, Cause he, he is a, a awesome team player next. And it all automatically says, you know, Ryan small kudos. Thank you for being such a team player. And I can say um, with And now Ryan and everybody that follows Ryan sees that like, you know, he's valuable to learning resources, right? Like we recognize that um, he's been an amazing partner with, with my department. And those things, again, like I can't give Ryan a raise. I wish I could. Um, I guess I can buy him a cafecito. We do that too here at Hialeah. But this is a public way, right? Of, of recognizing, you know, great work. And, and it also builds your network, right? Because people are going to want kudos too. So they're going to want to work with you and they're going to want to connect with you. Um, and that's, this is one way to, to, to put, you know, your voice and your value out into, into um, the world, right? Um, let's see, I've got one more person. So Caitlin Richardson already posted about this event, right? <laughs> it's so meta. We're looking at, I'm looking at my thing through the thing. Um, but this is, a, this is an example of 
you know, people are, are, are posting about events in real time or after, or after the fact. So I'm going to like it. Neris already liked it. Um, and she's also inviting all of you, right. And all of us to connect with the, um, DCLA LinkedIn page. Um, and with that, you know, if, if anybody has any questions or I can, you know, take questions after uh, Monty presents, um, that's, that's LinkedIn in a nutshell, um, get a profile, put skills on there and start networking with people. And you'll see very quickly that, that your, your profile, um, the profile of your department will, will rise. So thank you. I was just going to mention for those of you, if anybody does have a LinkedIn account and put this in the chat, if you want to drop a link to your profile account and we can share with one another and start adding our own network amongst ourselves who are here today, that might be a really great opportunity to start building that network if it's something uh, newer for you. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would offer that option. I'll drop mine in there. And Wonderful. Thank you so much for the very informative uh, presentation, Alex. I'm inspired now. Um, <laughs> late uh, Before this, uh, to be honest, LinkedIn did not inspire me, you know, social media burnout. But, um, you know, seeing this is, is a great one. So with that, we'll turn the floor over to Monty, who will give us the next tier of... All right, so not that I'm nervous, because look at that, studies are rock, right? I moved the mouse with this hand. I'm very nervous. So right off the bat, I broke the rule that Alex said, don't hide behind a cartoon avatar. But honestly, I like The Simpsons. But then again, that's when I had brown hair. Now it's gray, so I do have to update it. So thank you for that a piece of advice, Alex. <laughs> oh, come on, mouse. See, the hand is working again. Look at that effect. So again, my name is Montgomery Lopez, and I am the Librarian 2 for the Coral Reef Branch for Miami-Dade Public Library System, which means I'm technically the Assistant Branch Manager, not the Assistant to the Branch Manager. So if you get that reference, I'm glad you do, but uh, that's from the office. I'm a very big pop culture fan, and as you can see in the picture, I'm a big Star Wars fan too. I mean, lots of things I really nerd up about. But also, you can see there's some podcasting equipment. So I'll talk about that and how we got to that point in, in a moment. So, as Athy pointed that out, yeah, LinkedIn. Who is on LinkedIn? Well, obviously I am. But it's nothing that I would say, that's my go-to platform. I just use it as a platform to promote anything else that I have for my podcast. Um, as a result, in all fairness, I'm here doing a presentation because someone found my profile and saw the podcast stuff that I was doing, and I got invited to do this. So from a professional network point of view, and that was just like the bare minimum, not even having interesting posts. It's just, there's my podcast and I have some good content, but that's about it. So I started to think about the conversation that Alex and I had about, you know, making good content and, and posts, which I'll show that a little bit later. But then I started researching, going down the rabbit hole, so to speak, about taking your story further, right? I went to the library's webpage and I saw this picture I'm like, I don't remember that being a logo or, or or thing that we would have, but I'm like, no, that actually fits into what I'm doing because I'm talking to you about taking this story further. And it does kind of apply because I have to promote myself out there by telling you my story. So before we get to the next slide, 
this morning, because again, I was nervous as can be. 6.30 in the morning, I came across something, again on LinkedIn. Why my LinkedIn? But there was a TED Talk. <laughs> uh, the, the woman who was speaking, her name is Angela Lee Duckworth. And she mentions, I have to read this for verbatim here. Uh, one of the characteristics emerged as a significant predict predictor of success, which wasn't, it wasn't social intelligence, it wasn't good looks, it wasn't good physical health, COVID, it wasn't IQ, I'm barely functioning there, but it was about grit. Grit is passion and perseverance for very long-term goals. So, you know, here I am, just a boy, standing in front of Zoom, trying to talk, taking my story further. So hopefully at the end of the presentation, you'll get to say, you had me at LinkedIn. So, all right. So let's go way back. Like any good superhero story, there has to be an origin story, right? I got here for a reason, 2021, but how did I get there? Let's go to the past, to 2006. So working on my first master's, I had to come up with a marketing plan on a product. Well, there's this new thing called podcasting that came out. I kind of like that idea for the things that I'm interested in. So kind of like using a Jedi hand wave, I got my team to kind of work on this marketing plan and then we presented something on podcasting. I had the hard work though. I had to present something that is a podcast and never have done this before. This is the creation of that. Back in the day, I burned a CD for all my classmates of this recording. At the time of that recording, and which you can listen to it, I had used a microphone that I bought from Radio Shack when it was in business for $20, a really thin lipstick microphone plugged it into my laptop and just spoke to it. And I'm like, what am I gonna talk about? Talk about the things you love. And that's kind of why the monster part came out. It's not because I love monsters, it's more about uh, a huge appetite, a love of passionate things. I'm like, I'm all in 100%. So the monster sci-fi show is like everything science fiction, everything pop culture, throw that all in there, right? So that's how the name came to be, the Monster Sci-Fi Show Podcast. And I'm like, well, the format's gonna be like, writing papers talk about three things <laughs> and then a little bonus part but i talked about star trek i talked about transformers i talked about a composer who i love is bear mccurry who did the score for battlestar galactica and then i did one with a, a top 10 of all the villains from all genres and kind of ranked them how we thought they would be it was great you know i i thought i have something here really really enjoyable uh, but moving on it was really hard to maintain doing a podcast on a regular basis I have two kids working full-time and going to school full-time so whatever little time I had to do a podcast I'm like I didn't have much for a while so kind of jump forward a bit to 2013. It's a bit of a rebrand, but before we get to that, I have to explain, even though I've been with the system since 2006, there was that period in which I was laid off from the library system because we had that financial situation due to the housing crisis. So I was laid off for a good year and I didn't get hired back to almost 2012. So the first year, budgets were good. Okay, we'll get through this, fine. And then 2013, this was happening again. There was more layoffs. And I got really tired of this. So I became an advocate for myself. So you can listen to this on a podcast that I have preserved. You can also look at this on the county's website for the, um, the Board of County Commissioners when we had our meeting. 
So one of the things that I did, I tapped into my science fiction love and I gave my speech, starting with the line, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. If you know that reference, you're a geek and a nerd. And that's Star Trek II, one of the best movies for Star Trek. So 2013, I decided I'm going to commit myself to be this. I want my podcast to be a thing. Struck down the podcast. If anyone's seen the Social Network movie, you know how Justin Timberlake comes in. He's like, you know what? Don't call it the Facebook. Just call it Facebook. It's cleaner. Monster Sci-Fi Show is cleaner. You don't need to call it podcast. They know it's a podcast. But the idea also was that the tagline is, it's sci-fi from a certain point of view, which is kind of a reference from Star Wars in which it's kind of messed up that Ben Kenobi says, you know, I didn't want to tell you Vader is your dad because from a certain point of view, he was a bad guy, but not a good guy, but whatever. The whole point is that I see science fiction in many different ways, and I want to talk about it, good and bad. So with me, the guy you see in the picture, my friend Gene, he's been a friend since I worked at Borders back in 90, 93 in Pinecrest. So we share the same kind of passion. It's like, you know what? Our conversations need to be part of this podcast, and that became a thing. So I have now a steady co-host, and if he couldn't do that, I'll do it alone. As you can see on the right, you have my podcast equipment, my microphone, laptop, perfect. But don't ask cats to do podcasts for you. They will give you that side eye and give you nothing. Let me tell you, cats are no good. <laughs> Although I love cats, not the movie. Not that movie. So, moving to 2016, I wanted to say, hey, can I parlay what I love about podcasting into a library thing? And uh, I came across this idea. This entry, page 49, why is that a thing? I still don't know why there's a stamp on page 49, but most of our books have that stamp. I'm like, there it is. That's the name of the podcast for my library. 49 branches. It was at 49 branches in 2016. Because that stamp was there since I was there in 2006. So and then I know we didn't have 49 branches. So in any case. Um, so I want to say, want to say, hey, why? What do I want to do with this podcast? What's the purpose? What's the goal? I want to showcase the library, many different ways, from services that we offer, from learning about something that I did not know, and using the library as a resource, interviewing young adult authors, working and interviewing other librarians who are into what I am, which is graphic novels, also. Um, so that became my thing. I didn't really go through the higher ups because this was just, I'll do this on my lunch hour, I'll do this off on my time, but I wanted to have that experience of working as a librarian doing a library podcast. So 2016, I was able to get transferred out to South Dade in which they were opening up a new center called U Media Miami. This was the second location. The first one's up in North Dade. So in South Dade, they had all this great equipment, including podcasts. And I'm like, I want to be part of this. So I helped them start their podcasting situation. And let me tell you, it felt like, yeah, we got all this equipment. We're the teens. It was tough. We started in January 2016. Nothing was sticking. You know, we, we I was like, I had all my worksheets. Here's how we start editing and all that jazz. And I'm like, throw it out the door. We'll get them during the summer because they got nothing else to do. So they'll come to us, they'll hang out. We came up with an idea. Let's do a movie review. You come one day, we'll watch a movie. The next day after that, come back and then we'll talk about it and do the recording. Part of it worked. 
teens showed up to watch the movie, but didn't wa- didn't come to record their thoughts. Those who came to the podcast never watched the movie, so I'm like, this is not working either. So, not fun. But we have to throw that out as well, and that's when things change. Let's just have them just. We'll talk about something that's current. And from that point on, we started getting, oh, sorry. And before that, we also played around with different setups too. So it was always changing, always developing to try to get kids to be together and engage. And we would lead the conversations. But we got to that point that, um, what was it, in January? No. In November 2016, we finally got to push a podcast on YouTube. It's very raw, it's very higgly jiggly, but it made it. But then we had such success with the teens coming back again and again. And you can see me, we can see the top of the back of my head on that, that top one when wearing my Hawaiian shirt, but the teens kept coming back and coming back. Once we had them, that's when we got them to be like, hey, help me take apart this equipment. And, and as we're doing this, this is what this cable does. This is what this mixing board does. And they became part of the production itself. And we got to the point that we had to split the general podcast into one that's specifically for comic books too. So we did every other one as comic book and the other one is just general open topics. I was ecstatic about how that came to be. Um, one of the good success we had was in 2017. In March, E.B. Zaboy, who was a young adult author, came to the branch. The teens interviewed her. We had a live feed going up to North Dade for their U Media Center. I monitored the chats and passed the messages along to E.B. Again, you can watch that video on their YouTube page. And uh, the last one that I want to talk about to highlight was the event from Charlottesville. August 2017, we have a very good podcast. It's just strictly audio, but the conversation that we had that day was amazing. Never on a level would I've ever expected or planned to have those teens be so insightful and not so like reactive and like just bad mouthing everything, but just analyze what is going on and how do we get to that point. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, so moving on, 2017, I also wanted to do a Zeppelin presentation. So using the library uh, experience that I had with, the, with the, the podcast, we focused on there's three types of podcasts that if you wanted to do this yourself for your library, there are three things you need to worry about. What type of podcast is it going to be? There's internal to internal, which is within the library itself. So for example, if you want to talk about collection development make a podcast about that someone talking about hey if you don't know anything about mangas here are my suggestions about mangas and then you listen to that and like oh so now i know more of the information so i can make better decisions in my buying or um what was the other one that we did i'm blanking out maybe i should listen to my own podcast (laughs) because that's the whole purpose i don't have to remember it all (laughs) <laughs> but the other one is going to be internal to external, meaning us as library staff make recordings to the public to promote services. Or in this case, like the teens who are just talking about the things that they're interested in, and that's how they kind of recruited more teens to come in. But we haven't done that on the library side. And then the last one is going to be external to external. The idea was then teach adults or nonprofits, hey, Here's something that you may want to do is learn this skill, how to do a podcast, invite people to be part of your podcast and promote your services. And then the library can be the mediator and facilitate that as a resource. So again, we were getting there. We were getting there. So there's me and there's Athy right next to me looking very scared because I'm very tall next to her. (laughs) But she started something great she started the first grant writing learning circle since i was working for a regional library um, 
the regional libraries have access to grant writing databases. And I was in charge on learning how to navigate that for any patrons. But I thought, hey, the grant writing might help out me to help them. So I was like, I'll, I'll take the class. And it was one of the first times I actually met Athy, literally, <laughs> one Sunday, talking about the grant writing class. Like, oh, you're leading it? And then, yeah, she has that little wicked laugh that's kind of scary. But it's also fun to have that kind of energy uh, to go for this learning circle. So most of the time, I'm there. But this one time, towards the second, like second to last class, I was checking my email, and there was an email from the director about um, LSCA, which is the Library Service and Technology Grant. I'm like, that's an idea. So if I can use what I just learned from the learning circle that Athi just hosted, I can apply that and get a podcasting kit. That became fantastic because from that point on, we had, I did three learning circles teaching librarians how to just create your own content, edit, and as well as doing PSAs for each other. And that was fantastic and I loved that. And then the idea also was that Here's my podcasting kit when I got promoted to Coral Reef. We have a co-working space. I can now start doing podcasting and I can start having guests come over or have nonprofits or come over. And I'm like, this is fantastic, but hey, that all stopped due to COVID. So I'm like, you're killing me, COVID. <laughs> you really are. So, we had to do a lot of virtual learning with technology, especially with Zoom. I propose, and I'm going to be nice about this, wanted to do podcasting for the library. And there was some resistance because, again, we're all learning to deal with Zoom. How are we going to have the end product look like from storage? There was a whole thing. I did not want that to be something that stops me from producing something. On that same token, Dune, the movie, was coming out in 2020. So I said, let's do a virtual program, a virtual book club on Dune. For me, I lucked out because I had, if you see the girl upstairs, my girl, a woman, Heather, she worked with me at Coral Reef, who was a huge Dune fan. And down below, Rebecca, who I was at South Miami during the renovation, is also a Dune fan. So the three of us started putting together this presentation for a book club, and then my friend Mr. Gene joined me for the book club, as well as a mutual friend. And we did four series. One on why Dune is great, like an introduction video for those who know nothing about Dune, and then the actual book in which it's broken up in three parts. And each time, I recorded this for myself because once it's done, it is done. We're a library and we should be preserving these types of programs. We don't have to record or redo this event because it's already been done. But that gave me the idea going forward to spearhead something called Geek Out which in essence is a podcast we do it on zoom we have guests we talk about a thing it's a podcast i'm just not calling it that it's a geek out and every once in a while when i don't have actual uh participants from outside and it's just library staff i'm going to record that and use it for training. Hence why you see this picture then of us talking about Loki. And we got to the point like, I'm enhancing the presentation by having a little video recap on the corner while we're talking. It's fantastic. I've enjoyed myself so immensely. Why? Because I get to do what I do and get paid for it. I love doing the geek outs. You have no idea what it means to read and watch and, and talk about the things you love. We do that for free with everyone we meet. When we go watch Game of Thrones, 
the chatter is everywhere, right? Even with our patrons. Why is that not being done in a podcast? So until things go back into the new new normal, we have to deal with what we have. And this one is actually the last one we just did was on Suicide Squad. But the other thing to take away from this is that we're also talking about, by the way, since we talked about all this, the library has this in its collection in Hoopla or in our physical collection. Here's a magazine and articles talking about the things that we just talked about. Again, the library is at the center of this podcast using the staff as resource. And then if we ever get patrons, which would you do, but I don't record those sessions, it's a fantastic time. That's what's passionate for me as a podcaster to still do this. So going back to Dune, before Alex reached out to me, I made that post. And as you can see on the left, this is through LinkedIn. Uh, it's okay, it's fine, nothing's wrong with it. It's visually interesting. Uh, at the time, for four months, as of last week, I think it had 63 views. Okay. Um, after speaking with Alex, I wanted to kind of jazz it up. I found this great feature to do with my podcast in which I can do a video and capture audio, making like an audio graph on top, and like a little snap, uh, it's not Snapchat, but it's a little vignette, 40 seconds long. Here's us talking about why Dune is great. And it plays automatically. So once I did that, I added a bit, bit more to the title, put in the hashtags, and I checked as of yesterday, 22 views within one week. So just a little tweak, I got more eyes within one week just to get one third of where I did in four months. So again, I'm just doing the bare minimum. And if I listen to what Alex is doing, I can increase my visibility that much more down the road. So, so my conclusion, going back to what Angela had talked about, she said that grit is having stamina Grit is sticking t with your future, day in, day out, not just for the week, not just for the month, but for years, and working really hard to make that future a reality. So for almost 15 years, I've been doing podcasting, both professionally and professionally. I love talking about what I do and what I love and nerd out with others. I can't think of a better thing to do with my life right now, especially with COVID, is to be able to talk and make connections with people again, even though it's virtual. Uh, but yeah, we've had setbacks. I've had setbacks. But podcasting is a thing that it keeps going through. One day I'll get there and hopefully the library will meet me there too. But in the meantime, I'm promoting myself as a librarian through LinkedIn, as well as other network sites. But um, if you're interested, it's an open invitation for you to join me and others to geek out. So on the left, you see the QR code. If you go to use your phone, open up your camera setting, boom, it will take you to my library, or not my library site, it will take you to my podcast site for you to listen to all the podcasts and even subscribe, which would be nice. Or if you want to go strictly to the page 49, use your camera again, and it'll take you to all the listings for the page 49 podcast. So uh, my name is Montgomery Lopez, and thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Monty, for a really engaging uh, presentation, especially your story. Um, if uh, everybody wants to unmute or uh, ask some questions, we can open up for a general discussion. Um, I think that would be uh, a really nice way to, to move into closing our event for the day.
I saw that Ellen had a question in the chat. I just want to make sure it's brought up here too. It's a great opportunity. I, I would love to know this too. Where do you store all of your podcasts? I know that storage space is definitely needed. Well, here's the thing. Before you, you, before you answer, Monty, can you unshare your screen? Oh, so we sorry, can sorry, see everybody? Sorry. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, you can technically store a lot on different options. You have Google Drive, you have YouTube, you can find a host site, which I do, and I pay $20 a month. So I pay for 400 megabytes worth of uh, audio. So think of it as one megabyte is about one minute of audio. So I never go over 400 minutes worth of audio in a month. So I don't have to worry about bandwidth coming down, but I get to share that everywhere because I have that link available on Facebook and again, it covers the gambit. So, but again, again, the infrastructure is something that we would need to talk about moving forward if the library will want to pursue podcasting as a whole, not just for teens that we did in South Dade or in North Dade or even Hylia Gardens, which is another location, so. But yeah, we need to have that conversation. Anyone else? <laughs> Alex, do you do you do you know any uh, insight into how to get what it, what have you discovered is your best clickbait on on LinkedIn? Like, so honestly, the best clickbait and and it's it's funny because it was it's my least strategic type posts, <clears throat> right? Like, you know, I, I'll post about events and things like that strategically so that people know about the events, but but that's not what people love. What I think um, gets the most traction are when I highlight um, great things that my staff is doing. Um, I think people, and, and I think Caitlin said it, like people love to, to hear about a healthy work environment. <laughs> uh, people like to, to see that the team is working. And so, you know, I'll post about, about a great event, right? An event that I think was, was really great. And I'll get like 23, 30 reactions. I'll post about, you know, Angel went, won a Grammy or something. Like something like I'm highlighting like like a, a colleague or a staff member's great work and I'll get like 300 reactions, you know? Um, so I, I, I think, which is, which is good. I mean, like that's, that's, you know, what it should be when you highlight your staff and you, and you, and you put them out there and um, that's the, that's, what really gets the, the ball go, going. And then that's what creates more followers or more like um, connections. So then when you do post about an event, more people see it because that, that one post about, you know, great job Neris or great job Caitlin, or, you know, that, that will, you know, that'll hook the people. And then when you post about, Hey, we have tutors for students, then more people see it. And by the way, Alex didn't make up that example. We do indeed have a Grammy winner in our midst. <laughs> and then the funny thing about that is that since our names are so similar, people think that I won the Grammy. So people are like, <laughs> congratulations on your Grammy, Alex. Just run like, with it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. Like, you know, I, I'm putting out their music for the world, you know, like, I don't even know what he did, but. <laughs> And the name similarity doesn't, exactly. doesn't really help. It makes it even worse. Um, we have a we have a question here uh, from Ellen. So she says, can you get indexed on Stitcher or iTunes? And then there's another question from also Ellen, which might be different, which is Hootsuite posts simultaneously on Facebook and Twitter. One post in both sites. Does LinkedIn work with a site like that one uh, so they can post in multiple places? OK. Um, it's basically you have a link or a feed to your podcast. The host site, I have everything set so that it goes to Facebook, it goes to Twitter, it goes to my WordPress page for my blog. Um, 
and it does that automatically. If I wanted to go to YouTube, it goes to YouTube. If it wants to go to LinkedIn, I'll go to LinkedIn. So it does it all for me. There's very little I have to do on my end. Having said that, the post that goes up, it's very blank sometimes. There's no picture, or if there is, there's just a link, but there's, it's not engaging. So when I look at somebody with a post, it, there's nothing there for me to say, oh, I want to read this, because there's nothing there other than just a link. So sometimes you may have to take the extra effort, especially like with LinkedIn, and do much better uh, inserts of pictures or something a little bit more eye-catching to get your attention. So yeah, I do, back into that, yeah, Hootsuite is great for all that fun stuff, but my host site can do that too, so. Oh, and then the other thing too is that, you know, you worry about, you know, how is this going to cost or what equipment do I need? Everyone has a phone. You hit record. Send yourself that email as of your record. Convert it to an MP3 file. The software that I use is free. It's called Audacity. And then literally, you can start making your podcast. And this is great on the go because if you're talking to someone, you can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You don't need expensive equipment. You need to have passion to talk about something, anything that may be, do it. You have no excuse not to promote yourself or a library service. So I have, I have a question, Monty, even though I'm, I'm a co-presenter, I'm putting on my, my participant hat here. Okay. Um, so I, I used to oversee like the, the YA, right? area yep. when I worked at the public library and we always had a, a hard time. They were always there and they're always hanging out. They were my latchkey little crew, but mm. it was always hard to get them to participate. Right. You know, and you know, we, they had the best attendance, but the worst participation, you know, mm. cause they just wanted to be on like either reading manga on, on, on the computer or like playing games or whatever. Like, right. How, how do you get them, you know, and I know this is probably like pre pandemic, but how did you like those pictures that you showed were super impressive. Like, how did you get them to like actually come to the table and, and participate in the discussions? And well, it was kind of like meeting them halfway because um, you have to find a thing that they're interested in. Lucky for me, I'm interested in a lot of things that they're interested in. So if they're reading comics, I'm throwing some comic knowledge on them and then, hey, would you be interested in talking more about this? Mm -hmm. Whatever they're comfortable talking about, you know, like if it's anime, I'm kind of a little out of my element. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm doing geek outs in anime, I'm still in it because I'm making the effort to kind of meet them. Right. So if anything, I rely on them to kind of like, I need you to kind of talk to me about why you love this thing. And then that kind of lures them into like, oh, they care to hear my, my thoughts and my passion. And like. Nothing, again, you speak to someone who nerds out on your stuff, you want to tell everything about that. And that's how you get them. It's a long process, let me tell you. It's not like overnight, it's long. Always long. So. Anyone else? Uh, I'm looking in the chat to make sure we didn't miss anything. I think everybody's now is planning their their own podcast. That's what they're doing. I should hope so. I'm being invited. <laughs> and then and then promote it on LinkedIn, please. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Um, you saw Monty's setup. That's available at the Coral Reef mm -hmm. Library, and we have six new centers across the library system, all of which have um, some semblance of this type of equipment. And a few of the locations also have sound booths. So if this is something that, you know, whether you're in the academic setting or whether you're in the public setting, um, you know, step in, check out the, uh, the sites that we've got the um, materials already ready for use. Um, 
we've got people there who can help to get you squared away um, as far as the setup and, and knowing how to do the recording and all of that good stuff. And um, I'm certain that Monty would geek out if you contacted him <laughs> about how to <laughs> uh, start your own um, own deal and send your students. Um, for those of you who may be in academic settings, um, a little bit of extra credit will grease the wheels. Um, mm -hmm. Alex, you mentioned about the teens, something that I discovered works really great with the, the children. Peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> I mean, that works for me too. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't. I wanted to mention that um, I was a part of Monty's um, learning circle for podcasting and his geek out. And um, I do want to say that I'm a big advocate for it. It helped. It, it's helped me um, become a better youth service specialist. It helped me gain confidence. Um, it's my first time dealing with teens, and um, it's really helped me develop content and feel more comfortable in my skin. Um, the Geek Out has been very th therapeutical for myself because sometimes us as, um, you know, we do our daily tasks and sometimes we can feel a bit voiceless because we're just doing daily tasks with not really much act from us. So when we get, when we get a chance to geek out, it, it feels really good to unload. And, and, and Monty's passion is contagious. So it does inspire me and I'm sure others to, you know, use this channel because based on the, the, the training, it made the podcasting more accessible and less scary. So it gives you a it gives us an opportunity to um, you feel like you're a part, you're on the cusp of something innovative being brought to the library. And we really hope, not just myself, but we really hope that Monty gets the support he needs to forge this platform as a part of the library. It's it's I believe it'll be a big turning point for our library system. We'll, there's so many other libraries that's, you know, ahead of us. I believe that this will be, this will launch us to the, the digital age to, to touch a lot of these, uh, I'm gonna I'm finish up, but the, the younger generation who's all digital literate. That's all they know, that's all they care about. And I feel like this is a platform we need to connect and reach with our local community. Thank you, Annie. I appreciate it. Um, on that note, too, teens consume a lot of content, right? What are you going to do with all that knowledge? Do something with it. That's why I want them to talk about what they just consumed. Talk to me about what you just read. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but the other fact, too, is that this is just one aspect of doing a podcast. Before we got into COVID, one of the ideas was doing an outreach, kind of like what StoryCorps does. And we would go to do oral histories. That's something that we need to do as a library is record those stories. So again, we have those capabilities. If it has to be a Zoom, it'll be a Zoom, but it'll still be a podcast that we can easily achieve. So there's many different applications, not just like, oh, we're gonna have a good time here, it's always going to be a good time, but the podcast is a way that we can preserve the institutional knowledge that we have because God forbid something happens where we have another layoff and we have the brain drain. All that information is gone. Nothing is left and we have to start all over again. That's what the whole point of making a podcast and recording it is that it get preserved. That's our goal. So. So if there are no further questions and no conversation, uh, thank you gentlemen for two great presentations, um, for bringing some light into how we can better market and not only ourselves, but our programs. I know both of those things tend to keep me up at night. Um, 
because, you know, none of us wants to present a program to an auditorium of crickets. Um, <laughs> and uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Angel Hernandez um, to give us a quick message and outro. Thank you, Asi, and thank you to the presenters. Um, some really, really great information in here. I'm definitely going to steal some of these ideas uh, and implement them here at my campus. Um, but anyway, I, just to tie in to um, you know, what we've been talking about today, I want to remind everybody that DCLA does have a LinkedIn group. Um, so make sure that you click on that link. I just put it on the chat. Uh, and do join our network so that you can also benefit uh, from connecting with your peers. Uh, and, and I hope that you can also, you know, do some of the things that Alex and Monty talked about um, to further your professional network. Um, another uh, reminder is to renew your membership. <laughs> so here is the link also to, uh, to renew, uh, you know, your support and patronage helps us to bring and continue to bring this great programming to you. Um, so do consider that if you haven't done so already. And the last thing I want to also share with you is this link to our feedback form. Uh, please, if you can take a moment of your time to leave us some comments and some feedback and suggestions for things that you would like to see. Uh, you know, your, your feedback is, is instrumental and very helpful to us so that we know what kinds of things you want to see in the future. And so with that, I bid you all a wonderful afternoon uh, and a wonderful lunch and we'll see you next time uh stay tuned for our fall uh tour tour yes we'll be planning very shortly thank you everybody thank you everyone thank you bye, -bye. thanks happy friday bye